Hello from me. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied to you and yours. You know, I am always happy when I get to share my thoughts with you and to let you know some of the <laughs> interesting conversations that I have with the Holy Spirit and some of the things that he teaches me. And this is what I want to share with you today to encourage somebody. You remember the story of the prodigal son in the Bible? The story goes like a man had two sons and his younger one came and said, Father, give me my share of the inheritance. And the father graciously gave it to him. And the Bible tells us that he left and squandered all his money. And he came to the place where he was even the only food that he could get was the food of the pigs. But one of the revelations, I believe, <laughs> the Bible is full of revelations. But one of the things that always blesses me and blows my mind is that when the scripture says when he came to himself, and some of us, it takes us a long time when we are in situations to come to ourselves. But when God is gracious enough to you and you come to yourself, that is the beginning of your turnaround. And the Bible says that he came to himself and he said to himself, so when you come to yourself, what is the report that you are giving yourself? When you come to yourself, what are the things that you are saying to you? And then he says that when he came to himself, he said, how many servants are in my father's house that they, they, they live in a luxurious life and I'm here and I'm struggling and I can't even get food to it. I will go to my father's house and say, you know what? I know I have messed up. This is my own version. I know I've messed up big time. You take me as your servant. At least I will get a place to sleep. At least I will get food to eat. That should tell you that is the basic, the basic. In fact, is that these where you sleep, what you eat is the basic requirement of, of a human being. And it's a basic requirement for a child of God. You see, he, he, he will make sure that you have a place to sleep. And that's why he compares us to the birds. He says the birds, they don't sow, they don't weep. But yet, your heavenly father feeds them. And even in, the, the, in their magnificence, the clothes that they wear, even Solomon in his, in his, his all glory, are not clothed like the lilies. What am I getting to? This morning, I think I was listening to somebody use uh, mention this 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 um this story and then the holy spirit just drew my attention to something he says can you see genesis in this can you see the beginning in this and i was just i just went into myself and i begin to connect the dot i know it's a picture of salvation yes the prodigal son is a picture of salvation but let me drop this in your spirit you see the bible says that when he came to himself and he went I want to go back to when he said, let me go and ask of my father for my portion of the inheritance. And it just hit me for the first time that, you know, when we were in Eden, when Adam, we were all in Adam and Eve. We were all in Adam. When God made Adam, we were in him. Yes. And it was the mind of God to always, always give us eternal life with him. The fruits, the, you know, there were two fruits. There were two, there were two trees in the in the in the garden. The fruit of good and evil, or, uh, good and bad, or whatever. And then the the fruit of life, the tree of life. Sorry, the tree of life. It is all. Oh, it has always been the pleasure of the Father to give us the tree of life. But He told us, "Do not reach for the good and evil." In our disobedience, we reached and he said, I cannot let you remain because if you do, they will reach out to the tree of life and they will not die and they will live continuously in their sin. What am I trying to tell you? There are certain things God has already destined to give you. There is a blessing with your name attached to it, my God. There is something that God is saying that it is my desire to give to you. But what is the requisite? What is the requirement for God giving you that thing? Is that there is something in you that must die. With God, I, I have come to realize that why we can trust him, why we, we, we call him faithful is that he's, he's not changing. He doesn't change. 
And sometimes we think that we can do certain things and bypass some processes and still get to the things that he has promised to give us. It doesn't work like that. If Jesus himself had to suffer to get into the glory to, to obtain the things that has been set before him, for the glory that was set before him, he endured the cross. There are certain things, my brother, my sister, you have to endure before you get the things that God has ordained for you. In this kingdom, nothing is for free. When you read your Bible, read it really well. There is nothing. Every promise of God has an attachment with it. It is through Christ. If that is even the basic, that is the, the bottom line. It is in Christ. Everything was made through him, with him and for him. It is Christ. So when you have Christ, you have everything. Yes. But it is this same Christ that you need to figure out. You need to let the Holy Spirit teach you. Seek the kingdom of God. You need to let him seek, teach you the wisdom, the principal thing. You see, sometimes I, when I'm talking to you, I feel like I'm rushing because I want you to take your Bible yourself and read. I want you to glean. I want you to say, Lord, I desire more wisdom. I need to know the secrets of the kingdom. It is being made available to you. But unless you seek it, he says you need to seek it. Like the one who saw a pearl and went to sell everything that he had to buy that land so that he can have access. What are you willing to pay? What price are you willing to pay for that thing that God has said about you? Yes, he is going to give you. But there is a price you need to pay. Are you willing? There is something that needs to die in the inside of you. When you come to the realization, there is something that you need to give up. Are you willing to give up? Are you willing to die? You see, one of the things that the, 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 the son did is that he said, everything that I have belongs to you. But I will, listen to me carefully. When somebody makes a will, the will is only effective when the person dies. And that boy couldn't wait for his father to die before he gets in his inheritance. This is what I want you, at the point I really want to make. Until you die. A grain of seed must fall and die before it matures and grows and bears much fruit. Until you die. Until that thing, you give it up. Until you say, Lord, empty me. There is a nothing fruitful that is going to come out of you. I am not going to give you dilly dally and say that, but that is the truth of the kingdom. We are in it, but we are not of it. If you want the spirit life, you need to die to self. <laughs> that is why the man, the man who went to Jesus and he said, I want to serve you. And his God said, obey the laws. Jesus, Jesus told the man, obey the law. He says, I, since I was born, I have obeyed every law, every single one of them. Jesus looked at him. The Bible says he loved the man because he knew it was true. But he said, there's one thing. Go and sell all your wealth and come and follow me. That was the thing that he had to lay down. That was the thing that needed to die. But the man was in willing. And Jesus said, so difficult. Last time, last week, and I think I need to put that word down, that there are two masters in this world. Is God money? <laughs> I need to put that video. I've been praying about it, but I think it's time. Be careful. When God prompts something to you and he says, that thing needs to die. What he's telling you is that there is an inheritance somewhere for you. But until that thing dies, you cannot hold. You cannot keep. You cannot maintain. You cannot sustain. Because they are two masters. One has to die. Stay blessed. I love you. Share this word. I want you to comment on it. The more you comment, the more um, you tag people in, the more they 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 can um, they to have the opportunity to listen to this word. So comment on it. Share and tell your friends that this is the word of Yeshua for us. What is dying in your life? Let's make a reflective um Let's reflect in ourselves and see what the Holy Spirit sees to us. I'm Lady Wilda. Shalom, peace, and have a blessed day. 
I love you and I'm praying for you. Today, uh, right now, I just feel like I just want to bless you with the blessings of the Lord. And decree and declare over you who listens to me that you see, nothing can limit you. You are blessed. And you have to know that you are blessed. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are declared holy because God lives in you. And he that lives in you is holy. That makes you holy. You are sanctified. You see, that thing that is in you, the Holy Spirit sanctifies the whole thing. <laughs> when I look at myself, I only see the glory of God. And it's about time you seal yourself as such. Bye.